here right now, Sheriff Richard Mack, good friend of mine, always good to see him in person, like a Clark Kent type guy. And uh, he's here with us. He, of course, took it all the way to the Supreme Court. The Brady Bill being unconstitutional and beat it. Uh, one of the biggest Second Amendment victories we've ever had. And he's in the NRA Hall of Fame, uh, SheriffMack.com. He's a best-selling author. He's making a film right now about getting the sheriffs and local police to wake up and take our counties and cities back. And that is the answer. We're going to get into all of that at the bottom of the hour. And Paul in Florida and Joseph and David and Empty Congress and Mike, we're going to get to all of your calls as well on any issue because he's also been a talk show host off and on in his own right. He can speak to those issues. But I want to cover the waterfront with uh, Sheriff Richard Mack because he's gone uh, to Arizona to work with the cold case posse. There's no doubt we don't know who Obama really is. There's no doubt those are fake uh, uh, birth certificates. We just don't know what exactly it means. I, 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 very bizarre, but he's been working on that. We're going to get his take on that. But first off, we've gone from being called kooks talking about NSA spying, because it had come <laughs> out before, and kooks about the IRS harassing conservatives and libertarians, right. to it all being admitted, right. uh, to it now coming out that, uh, indeed, they are building FEMA camps, they are training to confiscate guns, uh, that they have army manuals on, quote, re-education centers, using the Soviet term. I mean, it, it even blows me away that they're really this evil and corrupt and trying to just hide it in plain view mm -hmm. and get the police and military to go along with all all the dramas, all the sitcoms, all the movies where the gun owners are the terrorists and the patriots are going to kill everybody. Yeah. I think it's, I don't think, I know it's backlashing, but I want to get your take just in general where you think the state of the country is right now and, and why the globalist, as we were talking about this last hour with George Norrie, everybody agrees they are accelerating the whole program. And, and I think we're at a danger that if it all comes out in the open and then nobody gets in trouble, it just sets the precedent and now we, okay, we know we're slaves, but we're slaves. Instead of it uh, boomeranging and, and kind of swinging the pendulum back, and then I'm concerned if we start swinging the pendulum back, they're going to false flag. So, Sheriff uh, Mack here to film um, and, and do interviews for Obama Deception 2. Great to have you here, my friend. You heard that general breakdown I just laid out. What is your State of the Union uh, take on that for our viewers? Well, it's amazing that uh, a lot of this... Uh got put off until after the re-election of uh, Mr. Obama. And you're right, we don't know who he is. Uh, we don't know where he's from. Uh, I'm not positive that he knows. Uh, <laughs> sometimes when we get into that. Uh, there's so much going on. And uh, isn't it wonderful, though, to have the endorsement of the federal government that the things that you've been preaching and talking about for the last 10 to 15 years are now coming to fruition? You know, they can't call you kook anymore. Because everything you've been saying, John Birch Society, everything they've laid out 30, 40 years ago is starting to fall apart in our own government and starting to happen. You know, um, it, it is absolutely astonishing, Alex, that, that uh, we have so many conspiracies uh, coming to fruition and being proved. I mean, especially the IRS. Like, that's a big surprise to anybody. I mean, come on. In Haven't you been harassed by them? Uh, never. My dad did. That's right. You, I remember you my telling dad. that story. Yeah. My dad got it. Uh, but this is this was just two or three years after he left the FBI, and so what the what the IRS was doing, and in fact it was exposed in 1997 by Jennifer Long and a few other uh, whistleblowers of the IRS, saying that IRS employees routinely fabricate evidence against citizens who they know cannot afford to defend themselves. My father fit into that. And so they just go after people who are middle class, who they know can't defend themselves. And so they thought my father would just pay the money. My father cared too much about justice and truth to do that because he knew he was innocent. And he didn't have the uh, funds to defend himself. But he had a friend, a lawyer, and a friend, a CPA, that went to bat for him. And after a year and a half of trying to destroy my father, my father proved that the IRS had lied. Then Jennifer Long came along uh, with other IRS agents, and there were two agents who refused to testify uh, unless they were done so anonymously. And so they were hidden behind a partition, and their voices muffled, and they were silhouetted behind a partition. The only other Violates the Constitution. Sure, but the only, the only other time that that's ever happened at Congress was when the Casa Nostra uh, whistleblower testified about the mafia. So we have the mafia and the IRS. Kind of a parallel there, isn't there? 
Plus, our country was built without the IRS. It wasn't set up till 1913 for the Federal Reserve. Right. It didn't become popularly in use till the 50s. It has hurt our country, and they can abuse whoever they want. And people will tell you, I'm not going to criticize the government. The IRS will come after me. Every, I know so many journalists and people who've been told, and they've even taped it, where the IRS says, stop covering these stories. They tell churches, stop praying. Yes. They tell pro-life groups, go be pro-abortion and we'll stop an audit. Right. That's in the news now. Yeah. I mean, that's even worse than I thought it was. I mean, what a criminal organization. It is. And and so I keep, I'm writing right now, I'm in the middle of writing uh, the sequel to the county sheriff, America's Last Hope. As you said, it is the solution. It is. It is. We can stop what's going on if we have sheriffs, local officials, and now we're even getting chiefs of police. We had we, we have chiefs of police on our board of directors, and we're getting uh, peace officers and deputies. We have deputies standing up. Now, Deputy Lennick, who you know, because you put him out there on InfoWars, uh, Stan Lennick from the Albany Airport, when he refused to arrest the people handing out the flyers. Well, he was our deputy sheriff of the year. And so we had Deputy Lennick at our convention. These are the types of people. Oh, so you got to know him. Uh, oh, yeah, he's a great guy, good good man. Now, he, his wife just had a premature baby, so he came in and left. He, he didn't stay for the whole thing. But he had to get back to babysit. And what a great guy. I mean... Will you give us his contact? We'd like to get him on. Absolutely. You're talking about one of the um, most exemplary deputies in American history here with his Deputy Stan Lennick. And so who was our... Sheriff of the Year, ah, David A. Clark Jr. from Milwaukee. And so who was calling us racist and everything? In fact, even after we've named Sheriff Clark our, deputy, our Sheriff of the Year, our CSPOA Sheriff of the Year, they tried to call a local newspaper, they tried to call us racist. Because well, they, they do that so that people will Google it. And then see that and not be part of it because they're desperate. It's like, oh, you don't want government-run health care? You're a racist. You don't want world government? You're a racist. Don't want to turn your guns in? You're a racist. They just use that on everything. Well, Sheriff Clark responded. He said, I'm the only black sheriff in Wisconsin. I'm the only one in Wisconsin and in the entire country that was named Sheriff of the Year by the CSPOA. He says, it's a little bit ridiculous to go after them for being racist. You know, and I, I want to tell SPLC, and I've told him before. I've told Mark Potok. He and I have talked a lot. And, and Did you uh, see his quote about me? Uh, not not recently. He no. said, Alex Jones doesn't build bombs, he builds bombers. Oh. In Bloomberg. Oh, wow. Sorry, go ahead. Wow, that's... <laughs> that's How are things going with you in the SPLC right now? Uh, well, the uh, lawsuit got thrown out. And uh, I guess, you know, it, it was a technicality, and I didn't agree with it. And after they threw it out, I, I bagged it. So... Um, they still are going after me, and they've lied about me a little bit, but the, uh, not nearly as much as... Why did you originally before. sue them? Because they had lied and put it out all over the country that I said, let's kill federal agents. And you know that my message has always been one of peace. Oh, mine, mine is too. And, and but I mean, they, they said that I influenced in Bloomberg with, with no evidence that I made the bombers do it, basically. Oh, brother. Uh, yeah, with no proof. And then they have the SPLC going, yeah, he builds bombers. And, and there's no doubt I could beat them on that. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the ADL's lost lawsuits for stuff like that. Because yeah. I just don't have time to mess with it. And I mean, you well, know. That was me, too. And, and I, it's almost a full-time job to sue somebody like that. It is. It's a full-time job. I, and when I did the Clinton administration, as you mentioned. And you beat them, though. I beat their butts and all the way back to Washington. Uh, miraculous case. Just an absolute miraculous case. But it was a David and Goliath story. And I love being David. And we're still creating Davids all across the country to stop all these horrible things. Exactly. I mean, those of us that are working full time just to wake people up, folks, we need you to be the ones that sue them and stuff. Yeah. I mean, we just had the lady in who started the lawsuit, won it at the Supreme Court over the gene patents. Oh, Austinite yeah. yeah. listener, yeah. took her two years, she did it. Yeah. And, and so, folks, you need to, when you're in the right, go after these people. And, and again, but the SPLC, they discredit themselves. Well, of course. Everybody knows they that I'm not influencing job. Muslim bombers yeah. and that I'm uh, the opposite of that. <laughs> I mean, that is insane. <laughs> well, they are insane. And uh, what's really insane is our own government. Now, why doesn't the SPLC come out and assail the IRS and assail the NSA and all these horrible other things? They call themselves a civil rights group. Yeah. So why don't they go after the, the government? They never go after the government. And the reason is, is because that's where they get a lot of their funding. They teach all these classes and get a lot of funding from the, uh, from the federal government. So they're never going to go after them. And, and that discredits them on their own. They are their own discredit. 
And uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center is a joke and probably not even worthy to be on your show, quite honestly. Well, they are becoming more and more of a joke, uh, but they're also very serious players. You know, they, they, are. they ran with their top informants, ran the Elohim City compound that McVeigh was at. And then, oh. and then Hal tried to expose that, the ATF informant, and got shut down. They're, 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 well, they're, one of their they're, informants came to uh, the event in uh, Valley Forge where we spoke about two years ago. And a lot of us were there, uh, Larry Pratt and a lot of big speakers. And that's when they supposedly got me. And uh, then they tried to call me a little bit after that and do an interview. And I said, you guys have been lying about me for 17 years. And now you try to call me and ask me for my comment? You've been lying about me for 17 years. Why would you come now and ask me for a comment? You've never asked me for a comment before. They said, where have we lied to, about you? And I said, well, since the beginning, since I first filed my lawsuit. But most recently, when you said I said we should kill IRS agents, they checked their own tape and said, no, we, we made a mistake. We'll have to do a retraction. <laughs> so they did a retraction. Well, at least you did that. Uh, it's just unbelievable. That's not a mistake. No, of course not. It wasn't even close. I made the ADL change something one time. It was just totally made up. Uh, and, and I had to have my lawyer get in touch with him and make him do it. It's. Uh, I want to come back and get into Snowden, all of this, where you see things going. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show. Sheriff Richard Mack is our guest. His dad was in the FBI. He's now passed uh, on to hopefully heaven, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, in the FBI, and, and the FBI and all these agencies have always been compartmentalized. You've got the light side, the dark side. In the past, talking to really top historians and researchers, maybe 10% of federal agencies were dark side. Joel Skalzen, who I respect, estimates it's more like 50% now, is is uh, dark side. Uh, what did your dad say to you about that? Why would the IRS come after him when he retired? I know they harass people they think are actually good people. Um, you know, I... Uh, what would your dad think today about what's happening with just all this open evil? <laughs> well, m my dad would be shocked with all of this, but he would also say, yeah, that's what they did to me. And my dad learned a lot about the subterfuge of government when they uh, audited him. He thought that uh, everything in government was pretty on the, on the up and up. Uh, he served, you know, 30 years in the FBI, served another five years in the Army Air Corps during World War II. Uh, he believed in government. He believed in what they were doing. He even believed at one point until he and I had some extensive conversations in the Warren Commission report. <laughs> you know, Why did they go after your dad? But he made some enemies while he was in the bureau, and I guess that's why they went after him, because this is very rare. Well, we had the son of a state but, police officer who called in earlier and said he was told to go after conservatives, libertarians, and that's come out in Texas, they've been told, right. to act like we're doing something, and it's really because we're the good guys, and the bad guys know it. Yeah. Well, my dad, my dad wasn't a real constitutionalist or anything like that. He was a real solid... Uh, uh, honest man. But I think also the other thing that might have been is they just started looking in the computer for people who fit the profile that the IRS wanted to go after, and they didn't see that he was a former FBI agent, and they just went after him because... It's funny you say that. My dad has said, please don't talk about this, but I, I, I just don't care. I will talk about it. He fit the profile, and later he learned they went after middle class people that were known as being nice guys. They thought they could push around. Exactly. And they told him in Dallas in the mid '80s, they said, "We are criminals, Mr. Jones." They said, "We are criminals. Yeah. We will take everything you've got unless you pay us this." Right. And and he was like, "You're you're." They said, "We are criminals." Yeah. I mean, imagine. And my dad was like, "Mr. Mom and Apple Pie." He's like, "You're criminals." Yeah. Uh, I mean. I thought you worked for the federal government. I thought you were here. I thought you were a service or organization, IRS internal. But they IRS said service. we are criminals. <laughs> he brought in his receipts and everything and the CPA stuff, and they yeah, said, "I don't care." They said, "Hey, pal, we're criminals." They were there like, "Hey, you know." Well, uh, so they told my father almost the same thing. They didn't say criminal, but they said, "We will ruin you unless you pay." You know, it's just no. They said that too. Right? They said, "We are criminals. You will lose." Yeah. Yeah, of course. And it's an extortion racket, and that's all this is. And that's those of us who still pay the extortion to stay out of prison 
uh, you know, we're the cowards. But, I admit, but even I admit. when you pay them, they come. Th that they was that come. retroactive tax act in the 80s. Yeah. And they came to him and said, pay. And he said, that's more money than I have if I sold my house. We went from, we basically had to sell our cars, everything. Mm -hmm. And he even fought them for a couple of years, but it didn't matter. Then they just got interest. And we basically took everything my dad had. Well, I mean that this country is pathetic. One, my dad pulled one other car card out, or he probably would have ended up like your dad. And he had a congressman that he used to work in the FBI with, Eldon Rudd from Arizona. I think that the final uh, straw to help my father was Eldon Rudd getting involved in it. And if he hadn't, I think my father would have ended up paying, and we would have lost everything. They uh, because my dad didn't have the money. My dad to to get uh, more money in the FBI, you have to you have to move. You to get promoted, you have to move. My dad never wanted to move. He wanted us to be raised in Southern Arizona, and in the same community where he was the FBI for twenty five years, I became the sheriff. And uh, I, I'm really grateful. Did he live to see that? Yes. Oh, yes. But he liked that. Yeah, he did. And was uh, he proud of your Supreme Court win? He was. He was uh, very amazed by it as as well. Um, he he died six years ago, so he he followed all of that very strictly. Uh, he didn't know or understand all of my motives behind it, but he knew and understood me, and he knew that what I was doing was the right thing. He didn't like Clinton, of course. You know, anybody that was honest wouldn't. But, you know, yeah. but it, you know, and it was just a miraculous time. My mother passed away uh, just two years ago. And, um, you know, she was kind of pro-government too. But every time I would talk to her about, okay, what are we really doing here? Why are we supporting government blindly? I said, do you remember what they did to my father? Remember what they did to dad? And she goes, oh, yeah. And I said, Mom. But again, that shows me. how old timers were so honest and so good. Oh, exactly. That, that even though they, the government had wrongly come after you and, and tried to ruin your life, she would still, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's why they, they do the crimes they really are engaged in. Right. The white slavery, the drug dealing. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the naive people who are well-meaning knew the truth, mm -hmm. it's just, <laughs> it's unbelievable. We'll be right back with Sheriff Mack. <laughs> Viewers have demanded it, so now you're gonna get it. More pro Second Amendment gun shows in the month of June. What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an I beam when there's a 50 cal present. Brothers in Arms, 50 cal ammo review and more coming in the month of June to the InfoWar. All right, some of your phone calls on a host of issues are coming up. Sheriff Richard Mack is here in studio with us. We carry both of his books, The Magic of Gun Control and the one on constitutional sheriffs at InfoWar Store. Dot com. Every sheriff in America needs to get these, and they've been getting them. Because now you see sheriffs all over uh, saying, why is the Forest Service armed here? And that's up on Infowars.com today, where sheriffs in Colorado are throwing them out of the towns. Uh, we've seen cases of where they're trying to persecute sheriffs and sheriff's deputies that uh, don't arrest people who own guns and, and uh, don't enforce unconstitutional laws on law-abiding citizens. Uh, we see moves to have the Secret Service be able to come in and go after sheriffs they're trying to pass uh, in Colorado and places. And all that does is wake up the sheriffs and the police and everybody else. We need to get back to that healthy jurisdictional uh, boundary uh, of the states. We're going to talk about that with Sheriff uh, Richard Mack here in just a moment. First off, this broadcast is listener supported and everything we offer are things that I use, I believe in. Take the InfoWars store.com seed center with the best non-GMO, non-hybrid, open pollinated, lowest prices, widest selection you're going to find anywhere. And we've got a whole bunch of the top brands. We did a year of research on this. This is just amazing what's in the InfoWars seed center and InfoWarsStore.com. Great to start a garden whether you live in the country or the city. They've got fruit tree seeds. It, it's all there. InfoWars store. Dot com. You'll find the Pro Pure water filters, 10% off with promo code WATER. 
uh, you'll find the new film that you can pre-order and get a free documentary with it. Uh, the uh, American Dream Free, when you get State of Mind, we are the exclusive distributor of that. That is available at InfoWarsStore.com. And when you purchase with us, when you shop with the good guys, it funds our operation so we can go 110% against the globalist. And now is the time. People are really ready to wake up right now. They just don't believe we can have any change. We can have change. We've had incredible victories all over the world for liberty. But the globalists and their media aren't going to tell you. We've seen record low approval ratings for Congress, 10% in Gallup. We've seen record low readership and support and trust in major polls for mainstream media. We've seen uh, record low support for Obama and, and, and all their globalism and their gun grabbing. That's why they put out fake polls saying Americans want to be spied on. Americans love Obama. But those are the public policy groups and, 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 and globalist connected things. All the real polls show the opposite. And I know they're real because I'm all over the country. And I'm out there and I see it. And I talk to the police and I talk to the military. Upwards of half the military I talk to are awake and listening to this show alone. Can you imagine? That must give fits to the New World Order. So please support us, InfoWarsStore. Dot com, or if you're out there listening on the radio, want to be able to call and ask any questions or order, uh, use the promo code WATER to get 10% off on the uh, water filters as well, 888-253-3139. And also support Sheriff Mack at SheriffMack.com. Sh Sheriff, w uh, as let, me add, let me add one other thing sure. to your uh, uh, message just then. Uh, I don't want anybody to think that that book's just for sheriffs. Every American citizen should read that book. That Absolutely. Here, America's Last Hope. You need to know what he's supposed to know. He works for you. So everyone in America should get that book. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, and learn about common law, Bill of Rights, Constitution. Right. They're breaking the law when they do this. Snowden shouldn't go to jail. The people that ordered them to illegally spy should go to jail. Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact... Uh, all the whistleblowers, have they usually just fire them or send them to jail, and that's what they're trying to do to Snowden now uh, worldwide publicly. And so it's it's an amazing process, but uh, I, I believe there's been too much light shed on what has happened, that Snowden is being protected a little bit just because of all the light that's been uh, sh shine on him. And so I, I, I think it's a, a, just an amazing process, again, of showing the corruption of Washington, D.C., by the way, to correct something, I remember now what my dad said when he came home, and I've heard the story 30 times after. The head IRS lady he had a meeting with in Dallas, she looked at him and she said, we are white-collar criminals. You will not beat us. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's like the mafia coming in your store going, we're the, we're the mafia. You will pay us or we'll burn this down. Of course. I mean, that's, that's what they are. You know, that comparison's been actually uh, uh, taking place in a lot of mainstream books. There's a book called... Uh, the Sovereign Individual, written uh, and actually printed, uh, published by Simon & Schuster back about 12, 13 years ago. The Sovereign Individual talks about uh, the Vince Foster murder being the most uh, the, uh, poorly disguised murder in American history. Uh, and these guys go right after it, and they compare the IRS to the Mafia. They use the same tactics they, for the same results, and uh, this is just a mainstream book talking about uh, finances, and it was done by a couple of world-renowned financiers, and it was not it was not uh, a book by Sheriff Mack or Alex Jones or any, any of these other radical extremists. It was done by two world-renowned uh, uh, economists, and again, the sovereign individual. And I read it, and I was amazed by what they exposed in there, especially about Hillary Clinton, who's you know. But I remember my dad, you know, who was like mainline going around giving anti-communist speeches in Texas and going to the Dallas radio when he was like 15 years old and in and, and America. And Your all dad did that? Oh, yeah. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and, and the point is, and then he stopped doing it once he went to college and got married and had me and stuff. And then my sister later, the point was, is he, he got married, had kids, and kind of moved on. But the point was, he bought into the whole thing that America is the good guys. And the p point is, that was the perfect cover for criminals to come in and take over the government. Here's a, another person I want to interview, Mark Mazzetti, Pulitzer Prize winner. The Way of the Knife, the CIA, a secret army, and the war at the ends of the earth, admitting that they're just killing people all over the world with assassination teams illegally, including here in America. And then you have... Uh, Michael Hastings saying, I've got big breaking news. I'm going off the radar into hiding. They're, they're coming and visiting my family and friends. He said there are, and then the FBI lied and said, no, we're not. 
And then his car, an hour and 45 minutes later, blows up. Witnesses said it was driving on the road and blew up. It's up against a tree. Didn't run into the tree. You can see it. It came to the rest against a tree. The engine's blown almost 60 yards down the road. And they say, day one, don't investigate. Alex Jones is a kook. It's natural causes. What do you make of things like that when uh, uh, Aaron Swartz is exposing the uh, scams in the NSA and the spying, and he's a leader and had a lot of money because he started Reddit. And then he says, I'm going to fight the FBI and the feds coming after me. I'm going to fight the Justice Department saying I've committed you know, crimes at releasing info. And I'm getting married. And then they come and he, he's hung. And they immediately say, oh, he hung himself. Yeah. I mean, I think those, there's death squads. Another one of those accidental hangings, you know, but... Uh, like the D.C. Madam, I mean, right. what do you make of this? Because it's definitely, they're killing a lot of people. I mean, this is, Gary Webb got shot twice in the head. Well, that's why I'd like, you know, the, the takes you back to the Vince Foster uh, assassination. You know, um, I, I would really like you to have uh, Mike Zulu on. You haven't had him on, right? The detective, cold case posse detective. Uh, no, I want to get him on. Yeah. Like, okay. Let's write can, all this down. Let's I get. Um, you, I can help you line that up, too. Um, but he spoke at our uh, CSPOA convention. I want people to remember that. CSPOA. Uh, C is in Charlie. S is in Sam. P is in Paul. O is an Oscar, A is an Adam, CSPOA, this Constitutional Sheriff's Peace Officers Association. Uh, we How just, evil. Oh, I know. You that, swear to it, and now you're going to follow it? <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's what a dirty idea, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Mike Zulo uh, presented his evidence to us all there, and uh, we just said, look, uh, this is not a required seminar to attend his class. Just go and see. If you don't want to go, if you're afraid of this, don't go. Well, it was the biggest attended class we had. And that was Saturday after the, the big day on Friday. So uh, I am working on that. We're trying to get this exposed. Back before the investigation started, the truth is the same people who asked Sheriff Arpaio to investigate this came to me first. And I was living in Fredericksburg, as you'll recall, at that time. And this was just a year and a half ago. And I told them I didn't have time to do it, and I'd have to drop everything, and I'd have to charge them. And they go, well, well, who would do this for free? And we're thinking about asking our pilot. I said, he won't do it. I said, he won't get involved in this. I've talked to him about this issue before. He thinks it's a bogus issue. But when he had 150, 200 people from the tea party, local Tea Party came, and they showed him some evidence that they really distrusted about the... Uh, and then notice the how Obama everything. came after him. Oh, I know. Yeah. Because that is a fake birth certificate. Oh, totally. First, they said they'd released it when they hadn't. They released a, a receipt of one right. that you go and print out as a computer. Like, <laughs> I, I've had to get them for my kids. And you go and they print out a receipt. Yeah. The Bureau of Physics says, here's your receipt from the health department. Uh, well, 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 you've been working on it. Tell people what we know. Well, the, the thing of it is, uh, the one really working it is Mike Zulo. And he's a former detective. And he's uh, working for free for Sheriff Arpaio on his cold case posse. And so Arpaio told his uh, people and told me at the time, he said, look, these people asked me. I said, I know. I said, I'm surprised you took it because I told him you wouldn't. He, said, no. he says, well, he says, just to get them off my back, I told him I'd investigate it. But I'm sure I'm just going to clear the president and everything's going to be fine. Well, the investigator did a thorough investigation and it turned out to be just the opposite. That's when I bought onto it because I knew Arpaio was an honest man and that he would do this thoroughly and professionally. And uh, Zulo has done uh, a marvelous investigation. He's taken the uh, birth certificate apart. Now he's Why would saying, they put out such a bad fake, though? Well, you know, I think they used a computer specialist that is young, okay, and didn't know uh, typesetting off a... Because here's how I knew it was writers. fake day one. Okay. They used the fake... Uh, uh, system that comes in the fonts in correct, in, in, correct. the typing font back in those yeah days, yeah it's meant to look up. exactly it's meant to look like typing but it's the computer yeah. font because right. the letters are identical and the splats from a real typewriter are like snowflakes or fingerprints right. I mean it's horribly fake and Zulo takes, this, <laughs> takes it, he takes it nine layers he takes the whole thing and it it was layered nine times and he takes it and shows you the mistake of all nine layers. Now, but why did they do something so fake? We found it day one. Well, when when you look at it at his face, if you just went in and showed it to Obama, he'll look at it and go, "Oh my gosh, this is great. This looks good." You just have to start peeling off the layers, and then you get an entire different view. So whoever it was, it was a young computer tech, and they thought, you know, no one went back to it and did peeled off the layers. They said, "Oh, that'll work." So they didn't do their homework, and they just had to get something out, 
and they and then even left it in layers. Yes, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, it was not a good job at all. Uh, for, so you have to kind of wonder who proofread that for him. But uh, Obama needed to release something, and he did, and they just rushed it. And and so what what we don't say, and what you need to remember on all of this investigation. All of your listeners need to remember this. We are not, and this investigation is not, saying where Mr. Obama was born. We're saying that the birth certificate the White House released is a fraud, a fake, and a lie. Have you seen Dreams of My Real Father? We sell it. Oh, of course. Uh, I mean, that's that's his mom, and that's that house, and that's the photos confirmed. I think, I think that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, so no wonder the Kenya thing, that's why his wife said it in speeches and why it was in the Harvard deal. That was the diversion. Yeah. The truth was he had a different name, different dad, yeah. a famous communist. I mean, oh, man. And, and you know, and Obama would spend the and, summers with him. And he used a communist pornographer. Yeah. <laughs> now, you know, he used his dad's name, Barry Sotero. Yeah. I mean, that's Obama's name that he used to go to college. And so it's amazing that that still, even the mainstream press, even people like Chris Matthews, who give this guy a free ride, and yet we know he, he used an alias. The only president ever to use an AKA. Well, we had at least two other ones. Yeah. I mean, I mean, this guy, who do you think he really is? Because, I mean, this, this guy looks like a Manchurian candidate. I, I think he was raised up for this. You know, I think he was groomed by somebody. And, uh, you know, when you look at... Uh, uh, well, no kidding. He was surrounded Davis. by top communists. Davis. Be. Yeah, wasn't it Davis? Yeah, Davis, but then yeah. you got the Weatherman. As yeah. soon as he gets I mean, to... All I mean, it's just... I mean, if you look at the people he was around, then you, you have to know. This was no accident. This was all planned. There's no coincidences in this government. There's no accidents. This was, this was all devised and planned. And here he is, doing what he was told, doing what he was raised to do, destroy America. And boy, they are. I mean, this Obamacare written to rip everybody off and make everybody go to part time. I and mean, it's meant to hammer the poor. And then they say it's for the poor. And then and this immigration thing, all this free stuff for unlimited yeah, it's, millions. It's for the poor. It's to make us all poor. <laughs> yeah, it's, to, it's to increase the poor. And yeah, uh, you know, right now we're having so much of this happen that so many sheriffs and local officials are waking up to the solution. And I, I am so proud. And that's of nullification. Sheriff. Sheriff nullification, state nullification. Because they can't go after all the sheriffs. I mean, if they can have 800 plus cities that are sanctuary where the illegals are above the law, right. why couldn't we have 800 cities where we ignore unconstitutional federal stuff? I mean, they're ignoring the law with the illegals and breaking the law. How about we ignore unconstitutional stuff? Absolutely. It should be done that way. Um, my lawsuit was an amazing miracle, but I do not recommend that sheriffs or local officials sue anymore we tell them no we erect the barriers that's the name of our new dvd set from our convention erecting the barriers that actually is a warning that came to us from james madison we can safely rely on local officials to erect the barriers against the encroachments of the federal government that's what he uh uh, espoused, and that's what we espouse. Well, that's why there's field. three branches federally, and then you've got multiple branches locally, because you don't want ever one group. They're always saying, get rid of gridlock. Let the government do whatever it wants. That's called Napoleon. Right. That's called Hitler. You do not want that. I love gridlock. I wish they'd all go home. The gridlock was so strong that they would just have to go home. We're a lot safer when Congress goes home. And I don't want to hear they're doing this to fight Al-Qaeda. What do you make of the fact that now it's admitted the government runs the main Al-Qaeda? Well, you know, I haven't uh, seen the uh, entire evidence on that. I haven't seen the... Well, it's on record that they're, they're using Al-Qaeda in Syria. Well, we do know that there's 35 uh, terrorist Al-Qaeda camps here in America. At least 35 that the government has documented. So there's probably more. But they're there. And why does... It, if the government's going after terrorists, then why don't they go after these al Well, it's the same thing in England. They have radical guys on TV saying, kill everybody, take over. They leave them on TV. And it's the same thing here. They've got those guys over here. I'm telling you... It's on record that now it's come out that they're running these guys. Thirty-five. Well, how could thirty-five terrorist camps exist in America if they're not approved? No, by I, I've America? seen those on California. I've they're seen the America. California news shows the guys jihadis running yeah. with the machine guns and doing all the training and yeah. and preaching. We're going to take over America. They're here, but they're then, here. but then I have to lose my rights with the TSA. See, they're using it to take our rights. Well. Right now, and I fly all the time, and this is something that I've just come up with, that it's easier for a terrorist to enter America, especially through our southern border, than it is for you and me to get on an airplane. Isn't that amazing? 
American citizen, someone like me, who's dedicated his life to law enforcement and keeping the peace. It's easier for a terrorist to get into America than it is for me to get on an airplane. Well, that's because they're using the terrorist threat, the synthetic threat to take our rights. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow uh, plum trees, grape trees. They will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buy in these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices. We bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching on TV, here is from the 1980s, a G.I. Joe Cobra Hiss armored vehicle. 
And if you notice, that's how the police dress now. It's like a cobra trooper. That's how terrorists dressed in the 80s. And this is how the armored vehicles uh, that were in Boston that everybody saw, that's exactly how they look. So we'll, we'll roll some of that footage over that. Uh, and you see in all the movies this image of martial law, Sheriff Mack, they're really trying to pump us for that, aren't they? It's amazing how much is being exposed by uh, Hollywood in the movies that they're putting out lately. It's really amazing stuff just like this. And uh, Enemy of the State, I mean, that was done about 10 years ago. But it, a lot of exposure from Hollywood, which I don't understand. What did you make uh, of the Boston bombing and then taking half the city and locking it down and aiming guns at people that didn't even meet the description or Dorner, a black guy they're looking for and they shoot up white women and Hispanic women in cars that don't even match it. I mean, what type of mentality is that? Well, I think the whole thing is just that, the conditioning of our own psyche uh, for the American citizen to be expecting more of that, to be ready for more of that. Going in people's homes, uh, no knock. You know, no warrants, no nothing. Just going in, drawing down on everybody, checking their homes without the owner's permission. And it's all about the officer's safety. The, the right. danger to the officers is going into a tyranny. They're, right. they're not giving you all this unconstitutional power for no reason. They're going to gut the country. <laughs> and the police academies teach that, I'm afraid. You go home at night. The most important thing is you go home at night. There's a lot more important things than you going home at night. And that is, one, keeping your oath to protect and defend the, the God. Absolutely, the because if you don't, you lose everything. Of course. Uh, uh, and I heard you talking with uh, uh, George Nori earlier, and, and exactly what you said about that. These people need to understand our families are at stake also. The law enforcement community, the sheriff's community, all of them need to understand we have a stake in this. This is for our kids and our grandkids. Nori said he had five grandkids. Yes. I have 10. I have 10. And uh, I can't believe it. You know, my pretty little blonde girl wife's only 55. She's got 10 grandkids, you know, and I, that's why I'm here, Alex. That's why I'm here. I love my five children and my 10 grandkids, and I want them to have a few. Well, look at how they target police and military after they're out. They hate you because oh, you're yeah. trained. I mean, it's unbelievable. This is real authoritarianism happening in America, look folks. Look how they hate Joe Arpaio. I mean, they've been, going on, they've been going after Joe Arpaio for four and a half years now, investigating him for one thing or another. Then they put on this uh, sham called this uh, recall against him. He beats him there. He always wins. He always lands on his feet. The guy just turned 81 years old, and he's still going strong. Doesn't look like he's 80. No. A lot of people that know Joe, and they say he's the real deal. I mean, they, he is. He is. I, I, I promise you, unless he's uh, totally blown me away with uh, his uh, superficial nature, uh, I'll tell you what, he, I've never met a more genuine person. I'm t just telling you, that's who he is. Tell us about this t-shirt. We're going to go to break and take a few calls. Okay, I apologize. Anybody that becomes calls. a member of the CSPOA. Uh -huh. That's a good-looking sh shirt. It who's really your, is, and who's it, your graphics person? Uh, actually, uh, Sheriff Christopher, who we're helping out in Delaware, who we're trying to save his job and career and, and all that, uh, who's been attacked by Bo Biden. Uh, we're helping him and his wife actually design this for us. And so if anybody becomes a member, uh, hey, I love that shot. Good. Go to CSPOA.org, become a member, and you get the shirt free. We'll send it out to you. Okay? Awesome. That's mine. I'd only wear it around the house. Yeah, it's yours. Uh, police will freak out. I'm walking around <laughs> well, with a sheriff shirt. You can wear it shirt. fishing. Yeah, you can wear it fishing. <laughs> it's a good-looking shirt, actually. Rex told me you like to go fishing, so you guys got to wear that and go fishing. Absolutely. <laughs> there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I guess it's time to do it anyways. That is my son's name, Rex Jones, folks. He's great, isn't he? Oh, love the kid. Yes. What a smart kid. Gosh. Yeah, he's a sweetheart. My, my book's dedicated to him, so his name's always been hiding in plain Some, view. Somebody has taught that kid well. Oh, he's, he's much better than I ever was. He's going to be amazing. <laughs> I'm telling you, God has really given me the next generation. He wants to fight the New World Order. I want to know what his IQ is. It's, it's, uh, we'll be right back. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. All right, I'm going to do some overdrive here. I apologize for everybody having to hold for eons. I'm, I'm horrible. I'm terrible. Uh, I'm the worst. Uh, Sheriff Richard Max here with us. Paul, you got caught off earlier. I wanted you to finish your question, and Richard Mack can answer it. Then we'll go to Joseph and others. Paul, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, no problem, Alex. You are terrible.
<laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's it an true. honor to to be on the phone uh, with uh, with you, Alex, and of course an honor with Sheriff Mac. Uh, uh, big fan, sir. Uh, just to quote you, uh, something that you had said a long time ago. I will not idly stand by and watch my country die or be murdered by vacant politicians. Sir, we are with you. I think that most of America is awake. And um, if you could just give me one minute, Alex, just so I can sure. get a, a good, uh, just to kind of summarize it all uh, so that um, uh, I, I look at it like it's almost uh, we are all pieces on a board, uh, a sort of a chess board. And there's a reason why there's a dark, a black side, and a light, which is the white side. And whether it's Snowden or Hastings or Aaron Schwartz, we've all got to play our part on this board. And I believe that Sheriff Mack is like the tip of the spear on a local level. Because if I can wake up my sheriff and, 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 and have him on, on our community and just our... our exactly. Our Once people are totally awake... It's over. It doesn't matter how much propaganda, how much bull. You cannot occupy a group of people that know you're the enemy. And the globalist, uh, Sheriff Richard Mack, isn't America really occupied by the globalist? Yeah, they are. And what the caller just said uh, is what everybody listening to your program today needs to do. Get a hold of your sheriff. Make Tell sure them you out have there. a relationship. Make sure you have a relationship with your sheriff. Uh, make sure he has my book. Make sure he's read the book, and then you vet him and make sure he's on board to be a constitutional sheriff. If he will not defend you and your freedoms and your constitution, tell him you're going to work to get rid of him. But uh, do all this tactfully. Uh, do it honestly. Do it as a patriotic American. But make sure you have a relationship with him and volunteer to be on his posse. Absolutely. Anything else, caller? Yes, do you remember something that you had said, Sheriff Mack, about you quoting Lincoln? America will not fall from the outside, but it will fall from domestic. Correctly. So yeah. I, I he, he said I that like, uh, we will never be destroyed from the outside if we lose our freedoms. It will be because we destroyed ourselves. We are there right now, and we have got to come to the... Well, the globalists are doing everything they can to bankrupt everybody so they can take control. They're on record. Correct. That's the Cloud and Piven plan. Which they admit they adopted. They are the enemy. Of course they say we're the enemy. And there is a solution. We take back America sheriff by sheriff, county by county, state by state. All right, caller, thank you. Good to hear from you. Joseph, thanks for holding. Uh, you're on the air. California. Hello, Alex. Yes, sir. Sheriff. Yes, sir. First time caller, new listener to the show. I'm out here in Southern California from West, West Virginia. And by the way, back there, they're pumping so much of that poison in the water that it's spewing out of the sock. They're spewing out of the faucets and globs and chunks of it for weeks at a time, at least two weeks out of the year. Out here in Southern California, it's the insane what's going on out here. Government's been controlling everyone's minds for who knows how long. They're out here charging every man they can. For, with domestic violence, charging them four hundred dollars to put in a domestic violence fund, uh, charging hundreds. Yeah, they want to get dollars. everybody into the criminal justice system. That's why if you drink one beer now, they'll take you to jail. While the government ships in narcotics, they want to get everybody in the system with a record, so that you have no rights. Anything else, Joseph? Yeah, there, yeah, I got a lot more that you're. <laughs> well, look, I'm going to come back to you real quick to have your question for. Uh, our guest here since you held a long time. And then we're going to go to David, and then we're going to go to uh, Empty Congress and Mark and a few others. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now, that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. All right, we're taking phone calls. You got cut off by the break. 
Uh, we were talking to Joseph in California, and, and, and let's comment on what he just said, then we'll go back to him. He was talking about how now I read about these cases all the time where if your neighbor hears yelling, the police come and somebody goes to jail, and then they'll come in without warrants, they'll taser people. We've all seen the videos where there's not even domestic violence going on. Or you yell at your kid in a parking lot and CPS comes and takes them because there's no law. They just call it neglect. Now the New Jersey Supreme Court said CPS doesn't even need neglect. Take any children they want for any reason. They, they ruled that last week. So there's this system. We know tyrannies go after the general public and make them criminals. And then real criminals are left alone. Uh, I, I mean, I want to be like an illegal alien where, where I don't have to have insurance and I'm left alone. And, and, and of course, there's that yeah. phenomenon. So yeah. what do you say to that? Uh, what I say is that we have got to get the sheriffs to build these barriers against all of that. We have got to have sheriffs that don't allow the CPS to take children away for, uh, for those ridiculous and frivolous reasons. It's been going on for decades. Over a million kids a year. Yeah, it, it, and it's big money. It's big money, and that's why they're doing it. CPS is a, is a filter of big government money, and so we have to have sheriffs that don't allow this. We've got to have sheriffs that become the guard of the county, guard of the Constitution. That is exactly what we're doing at CSPOA. All of it was born out of the book, The County Sheriff of America's Last Hope. We now have this uh, very strong organization, the CSPOA. If it, it, I'll tell you what, every one of your listeners needs to get that video through your organization here. We'll have that uh, ready in about 10 days. We already have... Sure, talk to Weldon. We'll get it and carry it because I know these are important yeah, events you're putting absolutely. on. This, this is not just education. This is living proof that what we're doing, that the solution is working. You're now reaching and thousands of sheriffs. Thousands. Yes. This is unbelievable. And they're scared. They're, they're mad at you. Yeah, they're correct. Because it's supposed to just be the foreign groups like the ADL and Southern Barbie Law Center are supposed to just waddle in and say, George Washington's a pig and yeah. and yeah. freedom is scum and, right. and communism's the way and your guns are evil. Yeah. And they're supposed to just fall down and do what they say. I mean, that we have sheriffs now standing for the Second Amendment in New York and in Colorado and in Utah. What do you make of them going after that sheriff in Florida? Uh, well, I've talked to Sheriff Finch numerous times, and it is exactly the pattern that happened to me when I went after Clinton on the Brady Bill. The exact same pattern, except they didn't arrest me. The governor in Arizona was on my side, which saved my butt. Not, there's there's several things that saved my butt. One of them was the NRA. I want to get Finch later. on. We've been in contact Finch, with him. Finch needs to be on, and, and uh, we need to do some fundraising for that guy because he, he's, they, he doesn't have a job. He's out of work. His family has no income. He's done financially in about six weeks. He's done. Now, we're taking donations for him at CSPOA, but we, we need to do this big time. Yeah. Well, yeah, because he stands up for the Second Amendment, and then now if we don't back him, it's, it's, it's a war, folks. Yeah. This is time to take action here. Yeah. Joseph, you had one other point real quick. Alex, after they got me in the system, they started harassing me. I've never talked about planes or taps on the phone ever before in my life. They tap my phone. They listen in my house. They they listen in on my cell phone. They they uh, they finally uh, they harass me beyond belief. That whatever my my question would be is who is doing this? It's probably the people who are contracted by the FBI or CIA. CIA. I'm the ha half Lebanese American. And then they finally made up lies about me and took my daughter away from me. And when the cops came here and took her, they slammed my head and messed up the... Well, my, what they do is they beta test the police state on groups that are that are authorized. And now they're moving from Muslims to conservatives, mm -hmm. which will be really uh, hilarious because conservatives supported a lot of this evil. Right. And and like Hitler went after unpopular groups first, the gypsies, and then moved on. This is a standard thing. I would get out of California. I mean, I, 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 or at least get up to the middle or northern area. You know, one of the worst ways they track you and put you on their list is with a concealed carry permit. Yeah, and, and I tell you, there was one time I actually went to get a concealed carry permit after I left the sheriff's office. And I told the guy, no, and he was a friend of mine teaching the class. I said, there's no way I can do this. And there's no way that anybody should have those permits. I'm sorry, but it put Wait, on. Interpol. Interpol has those lists. The lists go directly to the NSA, and you're being watched because they know you, they don't register your gun. They register you. Yeah. And so, yeah, very dangerous to get on any of those government lists. One of the worst ones is concealed carry permit. You're on every list, every state, every police agency in the world. All right, thank you for the call, Joseph. Let's go to David in California. You're on the air. Hey, Alex. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, what's it called? I, I'm a little nervous being on a spotlight, but I got um, uh, what's it called? 
Yeah, your phone's finish. real bad. Just try to get a quick question out. I'm not. Um, well, I have actually a lot to say. Uh, can you hear me better now? Not really, but go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, that there are, there are two fronts in the globalist agenda. There's a religious and a political front. And the movies in Hollywood uh, and the music industry, uh, they're basically outlets to preach and, uh, you know, condition the human, I mean, condition the population to, to go with the, what they want to go with, right? Um, yes. And so, what's it called? We know that uh, the globalists at the very top, they're a culture. And um, you ask yourself, oh, I mean, what do these globalists think about their children and what can happen to them? Um, you got to understand that the, um, the religion um, and to understand the rationale, if, uh, if you want deeper insight on what their religion is about and, w and what they believe in, I suggest you uh, Google search John Todd. He's an ex-Illuminati uh, who went um, around Christian circles exposing the globalists. And yeah, no, I've heard some of his recordings. Very interesting. Yeah, I mean, he's talking about how in the set, uh, like, like the, one of the, the last things they're going to do is they're going to they're go after our guns and they're going to use a, a, a fuel crisis to, to um, cause World War III. Um, he was saying that, like, um, in the early 70s, okay? In the 80s, yeah. Um, so, so specifically, well, uh, do you have a question or a comment? Uh, well, uh, my my comment is that, um, like, that according to, to the Todd, that the, the child belongs to the group. They don't belong to the, uh, I mean, and they're considered an adult at the age five. They're not considered, um, like, property or, I mean, uh, under the care of the, yeah. of the parents. Um, and so... Okay. Uh, they, uh, and they also believe that they're going to come back to life. They're going to um, they're going to be re reincarnated. That's why they push their agenda um, so adamantly. Because oh they God, could you imagine reincarnating the Congress we have right now? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, reincarnated as a bunch of dog crap. Excuse me. God bless you, sir. I I I, I get your point. Uh, now, I mean, the globalists are into a bunch of weird stuff. Um, let's go to empty Congress. Speaking of Congress, uh, go ahead. You're on the air, sir, or ma'am, or whoever you are. Hey, guys. Great to talk to both of you today. Beautiful day here in Tennessee. Thank you. What's on your mind? Well, uh, a couple of things. Uh, I used to be a plumber. That was my main profession when I first got out of high school. A farmer? And the water, plumber. A plumber. A plumber. plumber. Okay. And uh, we were talking about the water quality and how they were accusing people of being terrorists here in Tennessee if they question their water quality. Yeah, no, the, uh, uh, there's an article. In fact, here it is right here. Bureaucrat, water complaints could be active terrorism. This is actually in the Tennessean. And they said complaining is an act of terror. Will may arrest you if you don't like the fluoride in your water. Oh, for God. I'm not joking. N not worshiping governments now an act of terrorism. So, so what's your point on that, sir? Well, uh, when I first started as a plumber, the water was crystal clear. Now, this is uh, 38 now, so that's been a few years back. At this point, the water is milky white. It's as white as my wife's car. Oh, yeah. No, they dump, on record, people, when I showed articles earlier when I said this, they dump radioactive isotopes, lead, mercury. The so-called fluoride stuff, they call it, yeah. is, is up to 350 chemicals. Usually, it's only about 100. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why everybody's dying. I mean, the government is murdering us. No wonder people can't get upset, Sheriff. Yeah. They're just brain they're damaged. Yeah, they're dying. They can't complain. Yeah. Uh, Whatever you do, don't get a probe yeah. here at InfoWarsStore.com. Just drink the water. Take the aspartame. Trust the government. Take all the shots. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to me, folks. Well, we know, we know two poisons for sure that they tell us are putting in water. Chlorine and fluoride. Those are poisons. Both That's right. And, and again, they even take aquifer water in Austin. They know it's crystal clear and good mm -hmm. and spike it. With, with all this garbage. But again, I went to Hot Springs for a week and happened to be a big statewide water convention there. People can look that up. It was about two, two months ago. It was right when Jim Tucker died when I was there. Mm -hmm. people, and it was there. They were in the hotel, the Arlington Hotel at the convention center. And I probably had, I don't want to exaggerate, 50 of the guys who were the head water guys come up and say, I'm a listener. Believe me, we know it's poison. We still are forced to buy it under state law, but we, we do not put it in the water. So the good news is they know. Yeah, they know. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. Uh, so, as a plumber, what do you think all that, all that is? Well, basically, I mean, it, it, once they put it in there, there's nothing you can do other than filter it. And once you filter it, you're good. But I mean, you just have to make sure your filters are up to date, and have to make sure that you buy plenty of backup filters in case you know the economy goes to crap and you can't get any more. Yeah, it isn't a joke. They are. They, this is a chemical weapon attack. Yeah, it is. I mean, the government is chemical weaponing us. I mean, they're bad guys, folks. I appreciate your call. Let's jam in one more, and I apologize to the others. Mark in California, 1340 AM listener. Go ahead. You're on the air. 
Yeah, uh, follow the shining example of this listener and go door to door as I have many times during his live broadcast on KOMI 1340 of, of those of you. And uh, just say, uh, would you please tune your radio to KOMI 1340 right now and call two people? Don't have time to talk more. It's a very important broadcast. Secondly, uh, last Tuesday, I live here in San Jose. I ran for city council as the write-in candidate and lost to Roca here in District 9. But uh, I go every once in a while to the city council. And last Tuesday, I got to talk to them about uh, Melissa uh, Melton's uh, interview with Bill Gates and how he wouldn't respond to uh, her statements about eugenics or the 48,000 uh, Indians who are permanently paralyzed, you know. And anyway, it does go on the net, so follow me on that. And also, I have a question to Sheriff Smack sure. in regards to this thing uh, uh, with Snowden. Uh, Nancy Pelosi showed up here in San Jose on Saturday and said that Snowden broke the law two times. She said that. and uh, there She was got booed. War. She got booed. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she sure did, and she just repeated herself. But, I mean, what law did the guy break? I mean, many of us already know that... Uh, the TV and the computers can watch us and listen to us. And uh, Judge Napolitano brought that up. They can just flick a switch whenever they think somebody's a terrorist. I mean, what what law does Snowden uh, break? Sure. In fact, Did guys, in fact, guys, cue that up to her getting booed whenever you're ready. Because I'm going to keep going so we can talk yeah, to. I love watching that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to play. I meant to but play no, that. He did not break a law, but uh, he broke policy, and he broke also the inner uh, rule that you you don't uh, embarrass the NSA. That's their inner rule. And the FBI has the same rule. You can do a lot of stuff, but don't embarrass the head people there. And uh, so that's really what he broke. And now they're tripping over each other to try to get this guy. Uh, actually, I hadn't got to this yet. Donald Trump, and I appreciate your call, sir. God bless you. This is up on Infowars.com. Just broke. Donald Trump says Snowden should be assassinated. Extradition process and justice system are too slow for would-be presidential candidates. So he's calling for That's something. That's against the law. It's illegal. Doing? That's illegal what he's doing right there. That is against the law. He should be investigated. Well, I mean, but I mean, it's also under NDAA. I don't care if they say they pass law to kill citizens. If the if the godlike uh, you know, president, uh, Barry Sotero, says so, this just shows how this is authoritarianism. It's illegal. They're spying on all of us. They've been caught. Right. The, the CIA director brags, yeah, you're... Uh, Dishwashers watching you to Wired Magazine, that's okay. Snowden goes, yeah, that's all true. And they're spying on the media, which had already come out. And the media is like, kill him, arrest us. I mean, just, we want to have our rights taken. Now, uh, actually, Trump, in making that comment, has put himself under... Uh a probable investigation. Well, but it won't happen, they'll love it. It happen. No, no, it's like Nazi it. Germany. They like People it. said, arrest, arrest all these people, round them up. They made him a brown shirt. I mean, I'm going to tell you, Donald Trump is a mega piece of trash. <laughs> and again, he only did the whole Kenya thing to get attention for himself and then kill the investigation. And, and that's what I've been told by Jerry Corsi and others. Uh, it, you just follow what happened. And it, that's a natural conclusion, what Corsi said. I notice he got his casinos right after that. Yeah. In Chicago. He was, he was broke. And then all of a sudden, he's a multi-billionaire again. Yeah. Donald Trump, what a disgusting thug. Yeah. I mean, he's here saying, kill an American citizen that exposed I mean, crime. The Southern Are we going to stand up for him? Yes. What are they going to, oh, Snowden's car is going to blow up? Yeah. <laughs> what would the SPLC say if you and I said that? That we should kill somebody else? Come Watch on. out, they'll edit that. <laughs> yeah. So, did not say it. <laughs> hey, I, a lady called in and said, could this be a weather weapon with this tornado? And I said, they have major weather modification, but it's mainly weather systems. I said, that's Tornado, tornado Alley, probably a real tornado. They just go on the news and say that I said Obama sent a tornado and keep reporting it every week. Just lying to their audience. I mean, it's A tornado hit our convention Friday night, and we were evacuated right when I was giving Sheriff Clark his plaque. We were evacuated, and so we were in this little tight room. So I huddled everybody together, got up on a chair, and I continued the presentation. We have all that on tape. Where was that? At the Saint uh, in Saint Charles, Missouri, at the Ameristar Hotel. Unbelievable! Yeah, it was amazing. Uh, so, so we didn't let him get in our way. We just kept doing it. So it was probably big sis uh, <laughs> dressed in a Hitler uniform, steering the thing. It's a joke. <laughs> MSNBC, go ahead, go with it, you liars. And she's a space alien too. She said, "I believe giant wasps run the New World Order from underneath the uh, the uh, new, the the uh, building." I never even made that joke before.
<laughs> Actually, it's Easter Bunny's, uh, okay. Rachel, Mr. Maddow. I mean, Miss M M Janet Reno, whatever her name is. And people ask me why I enjoy these shows so much. <laughs> ah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Let me tell you, these people crave power. Okay. What is it about bad people, before we take a few final calls, we got Pelosi clip in a minute. I found that bad degenerates and weirdos, they hate those of us that aren't like them. I mean, they hate good people. I don't. It's like a criminal instinct yeah. to just and and to get crazier and crazier till they get caught. Well, it, you know, it almost seems like that. But if you look at what they've done, uh, going after the good people of this country, and I go back to Sheriff Arpaio, you know, here's a guy just trying to do his job. He's the only sheriff in the country, basically the only sheriff in the country really doing something about illegal immigration, trying to protect his people. He's actually, the crime has gone down while he was doing that. Now they come out and say that he was racially profiling, and they still keep going after him. And he if a million Americans showed up in a Mexican city, we'd all be arrested. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean no other country lets you do this. Why are we, why is America supposed to just be wide open? No, we're not. And and the crazy thing of it is that that's the only thing that the federal government is assigned to do is protect our borders. They have like four law enforcement assignments. And this new them. border bill gets rid of that. Yeah, it does. I mean, this the Gang of Eight thing, it really, they named them right. Gang of Eight, yeah, they are a gang of criminals. Uh, and, and that whole thing is absolutely something America will not survive if this passes through. This is something that's irreversible. Well, it's like Ron Paul said, if everybody wasn't going to get welfare and all this stuff, and if these political groups didn't see the government as their friend, they'll do whatever they say on average. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's over. I mean, yeah. and, and then it's like Pat Buchanan said, when they try to take the guns, mm -hmm. it's going to be a civil war. Yeah. Which I guess the globalists won again. I don't know. I... I I, it certainly seems to be heading that way, and what we are doing at CSPOA is trying to head all of that off at the pass. What better thing could a sheriff do than to head that off at the pass? And I'll tell you, if enough sheriffs and enough counties and cities just start doing the right thing, yes. the feds can't stop it. That's correct. Uh, and, and there's nothing they can do. There's nothing they can do. But we have to have a good size and amount doing it. I, and our goal is to get at least 1,000. There's 3,100 counties in the country. We need at least a third. Absolutely. We need to get you on Coast to Coast AM. Yeah, let's do it. Well, I gotta, I'm got. i not going to bug George if listeners think that's a good thing. On, I, I George, think it is. Are you still listening? Get me on. <laughs> He's probably is. He's a great guy. I'm on the show tonight. Uh, I'll talk about you tonight. I'll bring it up. All right. uh, let's go to, uh, let's play the Pelosi clip. Here she is saying that Snowden's a criminal when she's a big fat criminal. Here it is. Answered. Uh, and as far as Snowden, he did, uh, you know, I may be in disagreement with you, he did. Uh, violate the law a in terms of, uh, uh, of releasing those documents. We don't know. I understand. I understand. I understand I'm an arrogant piece of crap. But he did uh, violate the law. And, they, and the fact is, and the fact is uh, <laughs> oh, that, really that down. I love it. Uh, again, we have to have the balance between um, the balance uh, between See, security balance. before they weren't privacy. spying on us now it's a balance to have giant command bases exactly. built everywhere yeah. and they're going we listen to everything you do ha, ha, ha. this guy goes yes they are arrest him yeah the balance the balance First, they and, and they, they say you get it. security by giving up your liberty when all you ever get is hell on earth right there, yeah, there's no balance. There never has been a balance. They expose that there's been all these crimes taking place, and now they're saying they're trying to balance it. Come on. No, the only balance well, plus we they've want, had all this NSA when 9-11 and all this happened. The only balance we want is the states taking back the balance of power they're supposed to have. Again, folks, the balance of power is the solution, and that is the counties. Absolutely. And Let's talk to Mr. States Mr. C on the marathon bombing drills. Go ahead, sir. Yes, um, I just wanted to say what I was watching immediately after the Boston Marathon happened, the bombing happened. Well, I was watching uh, different channels, different TVs. On some of the news stations, they were saying, oh, it was okay, it was just a drill, it was just a drill. Then one reporter came on and said, oh, we're so lucky today that they was having a drill that there's so many EMTs and ambulances around to help no, I know. people we have that those, got hurt by the bombing. We have those clips. We need to put those back together for people. And then it turned out they had a drill, which they lied about, and they said, don't look at that. And then it turned out the brothers were on CIA payroll being sent overseas again. Did you know that, Sheriff Mack? I did not know that. Sounds like a familiar story, doesn't it? Doesn't, doesn't surprise me. Not at all. You know, they were going to blame it on the Tea Party in the drill. Did you know that? The Tea really? Party was supposed to be the bombers, yeah. Wow. What do you make of that? As soon as it happened, that's what I was afraid was going to happen. That was called Operation Urban Shield.
They had drills before, during, and are supposed to have them after. Where a group wearing Patriot outfits blows up the, uh, the event. They wanted to catch up with the IRS attacking Tea Party groups, huh? Well, yeah, you blow yourself up and blame on them, but that didn't work. So then they had their cutouts, who they really had out there. Mm. I mean, they were the older brother was definitely a CIA operative. Mm. He was sent under the big Brzezinski groups overseas to infiltrate Al-Qaeda groups, mm. who they're using against Russia. He had fake names. It was allowed to go. The, the Russians blew his cover a few years ago and said, "Well, who is this guy? Does he work for you? Why is he allowed to fly on fake names?" Yeah. What's that sound like to you? Yeah. That sounds like a, a operation that's you know, going awry. We had calls about that and saw some of that at the time. We should recollate those clips. Hey, have you found those clips online again? Because I was just reminded of that. That they were saying right away, "It may be a drill. We think it's the drill they were having." Yeah. And they're like, "Let's not talk about the drill, Mr. C. Do you have those clips?" I can't find them. I don't see them online anywhere. Yeah, I remember it happened, and I've seen them once, and we need to see. Our, we don't even put on our best evidence. It's just overwhelming. Send them to show tips at infowars.com. That's it. I apologize to Frank and Carl and, and uh, Carol, but I got the most of you. And I'm going to go interview this guy for Obama Deception 2. And uh, then we'll be back tonight, 7 o'clock Central, with InfoWars Nightly News. If you have a PrisonPlanet.tv membership and you haven't shared it, please share it today. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash